This material has been excerpted from the college television course, The Mechanical Universe, and re-edited specifically for use in the high school curriculum. The Mechanical Universe is funded by the Annenberg CPB Project, made possible by a grant from the National Science Foundation. In 1655, Isaac Newton explained that a force exists between any two objects in the universe. This relationship also explains why all bodies near the surface of the Earth fall with a constant acceleration, and why an apple, but not the moon, falls from the sky. Three centuries later, a trio undertakes a journey that surpasses the voyages of Marco Polo, Magellan, Columbus, Drake, perhaps every earthly explorer since the first primitive step into the unknown. These men are bound for the moon. Their destiny has already been determined by engineers and scientists, by technicians and visionaries, researchers and test pilots, by the best laid plans and all the right stuff. But everyone here, from the ground up, stands atop the shoulders of one man, Isaac Newton. Before Newton, no one knew why all bodies fall at the same rate, nor why the moon orbits the Earth, nor why the Earth orbits the sun in a precise path at a precise rate. Before Newton, Probably nobody even imagined these phenomena were related. So it fell upon young Isaac Newton to create a new science to unite heaven and earth. Launched from Newton's shoulders, men could finally free themselves of earth by casting off the chains of gravity. The force of gravity is no small barrier. Its strength can be appreciated by viewing the tremendous force it takes to break free but when humans are launched into outer space, toward the mysterious regions of the moon, a mere appreciation of gravity isn't enough. It's necessary to know how it really works. Newton assumed that every two bits of matter in the universe attract each other. The force of attraction is proportional to each of their masses. The force weakens inversely as the square of the distance between the two bodies. This law can be represented as a vector equation with the constant of proportionality called g. g is the same for any two bodies in the universe. The negative sign indicates an attractive force between the masses. Since the force of gravity on the moon is less than it is on Earth, everything on the moon weighs less than it does back home. Things fall more slowly, even though there's almost no atmosphere on the moon. But still, all bodies, even a hammer and a feather, fall at the same rate. Why? Newton's law of universal gravitation explains that a force exists between any two particles of mass anywhere in the universe. Therefore, every particle of mass in the astronaut is attracted by every particle of mass in the moon. 
What's the net effect of all these forces added together? Each body attracts the other as though all of its mass were concentrated at its center of mass. The force the Earth's gravity exerts on an apple, for example, is minus g. Times the mass of the apple, times the mass of the Earth, divided by the square of the distance from the center of the apple to the center of the Earth. For all practical purposes, that distance is the radius of the Earth. But force is also mass times acceleration. So when made equal, the mass of the apple cancels from the equation, leaving an acceleration that doesn't depend on the mass of the apple. Gravity has the same effect on any object near the surface of the Earth. Half a century before Newton, Galileo discovered that all bodies fall with the same constant acceleration. With his law of gravity, Isaac Newton explained this strange phenomenon. The acceleration of any falling body on the Earth is little g. It's equal to the universal gravitational constant, big G, times the mass of the Earth, divided by the square of the radius of the Earth. On the moon, the same force is at work but the acceleration is different. It still depends on the universal gravitational constant, but now the mass is the mass of the moon and the distance is the radius of the moon. The net result is that the acceleration of a falling body on the moon is one sixth of what it is on Earth. While necessarily interested in falling bodies, Newton sought to explain something else about gravity. If apples fall to the earth, why doesn't the moon? Could it be that the same law applies? Newton's argument was to imagine someone casting a projectile horizontally, firing a cannon, for example, from somewhere high above the earth's surface. From Galileo's discovery, Newton already knew that a body dropped from 16 feet above the earth's surface reaches the ground in one second. The distance a cannonball travels depends on its velocity. If the projectile leaves the barrel at 30 feet per second, it travels 30 feet before it hits the ground one second later. But Newton realized that if the projectile were fired fast enough, it would take more than one second to reach the ground. The earth would curve away before the cannonball reached it. In fact, he could imagine a cannonball moving so fast it would never strike the ground. It would just keep falling forever while the earth forever curved away beneath it. In other words, it would be in orbit. Zero G, or weightlessness, isn't really the absence of gravity. Astronauts orbit the moon, held there by gravity just as surely as gravity holds the moon in orbit, or pulls an apple to Earth. The objects floating around in the cabin are in free fall, just as the spacecraft itself is. Together, they will continue to fall in their orbit around the moon, just like Newton's cannonball in orbit around the Earth. Isaac Newton knew that the moon, just like the cannonball, keeps falling, falling through eternity, never reaching the Earth. The moon falls toward the Earth with an acceleration of g times the mass of the Earth, divided by the square of the distance to the center of the Earth. The formula is the same as the one for the apple or any other body on Earth, except that now the distance isn't the radius of the Earth. In this case, it's the much larger distance from the Earth to the moon.
the rate at which the moon falls is smaller than the rate at which the apple falls. It's equal to the radius of the Earth, divided by the distance to the moon squared. That ratio has been known since antiquity. Greek mathematicians calculated the distance to the moon as 60 times the radius of the Earth. The moon should fall more slowly than the apple by a factor 60 squared, or 3,600 times slower. Since an apple falls 16 feet in one second, Newton concluded that each second, the moon should fall a distance of 16 feet divided by 3,600. That distance is 1 20th of an inch. That was the prediction made by Isaac Newton's theory of gravity. The next crucial step was to compare theory to reality. In other words, the question facing Newton was how far does the moon actually fall every second? How could he deduce the answer from what he knew about the moon's orbit? He knew the moon goes around the Earth in a nearly circular orbit. And he knew it takes about one month to make the trip. According to the law of inertia, the moon doesn't want to travel in a circle. It wants to fly straight off on a line that is tangent to the circle. In one second, it would go 40,281 inches along the line. By following the circle, the moon is actually falling. That is to say, it's falling away from the line and toward the center of the Earth. This is the distance the moon falls in one second. By the Pythagorean theorem, rm squared plus d squared equals the sum of rm and sm squared. So d squared equals 2 rm sm plus sm squared, a quantity so small it's safe to ignore. Given the size of rm and d, sm is 1 20th of an inch. For the world at large, how enormous that 1 20th of an inch would turn out to be that bodies would fall forever under the influence of gravity had been proved by an astounding agreement between theory and observation. Yet marvelous as this secret was, another 20 years would pass before Newton would share it with the world. Nonetheless, at that moment and with that result, that 1 20th of an inch, Newton knew that he held in his hands the key to the mechanical universe. He had taken the first step along the path that led us into space and to the moon. I told Michael, you guys are up there, and uh, he said, who's driving? That's a good question. I think Isaac Newton's doing most of the driving right now. According to Newton's universal law of gravity, the gravitational force between any two objects is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Newton's law explains why all bodies fall with the same acceleration near the surface of the Earth. When combined with the law of inertia, it explains the orbit of the moon and the motions of all heavenly bodies.
This material is based upon work supported by the National Science Foundation under grant number SPE 8318420. Any opinions, findings, and conclusions or recommendations expressed in this program are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the views of the National Science Foundation.